Well, hello, Internet. Welcome to part two of my explanation of object-oriented programming. If you did not watch part one, you should watch that first. It's up above. And if you don't know anything about programming, you should take a look at my JavaScript tutorial, which is also up above. In this presentation, we're going to cover everything there is to know about polymorphism. But first off, let's make sure you completely understand inheritance. We defined above the original car class. Then we created a subclass of the superclass car and named it Dodge. In object-oriented programming, this is known as extending the superclass. Dodge inherited all the functionality of the class car and then extended it with a new method named Honk Horn, and then it went on to create a new function called Drive Forward. You could have also created new variables and methods for the Dodge class without changing the superclass in any way. The Dodge object, remember, is always a car object, but a car object is not necessarily always a Dodge object. Why is inheritance good? First off, it decreases duplicate code. It eliminates looking for code that needs to be changed because you never change old code, you just overwrite it. It avoids breaking previously working code, and it simplifies your code overall. On to polymorphism. You can see here an example in which I created a new object of type Dodge, but still used the original car A class to define it. What does this mean? As you can see here, car A followed by the object you're creating named Dodge tells the computer a variable of type car A named Dodge is being created. After the equal sign, new car A sets aside space in memory for a new car A object. The equal sign assigns the car A object to the variable named Dodge and the dodge variable and the car A object both are the same. Dodge is just a variable name that points to the car A object in memory. But there are thousands of types of cars. Isn't this going to make everything confusing? Well, without polymorphism, you would have such confusing definitions as car dot Toyota dot truck dot 4x4, just to define a Toyota truck that was a 4x4. With polymorphism, you can simply define a new object using the superclass like this. Here I used the superclass car, followed by the object named Dodge, and then assigned it to the car A object. You can see here how this differs. Above here, I used the car A class to define the new object Dodge, while here I used the car superclass to define that object named Dodge. I'm simply declaring an object Dodge to be of the superclass type instead of declaring a, an object named Dodge of a subclass of the car superclass. What does this allow you to do? Well, you can now create one function that automatically works with all of your subclasses of the type car. Here is an example. Here I created a function named tuna, and then it is followed by the drive forward function then the drive backward, and the stop functions, which are all defined within class car. What this will allow you to do is to pass any car type to the function tuneup, and know that it will automatically run through all of those functions, which is drive forward, drive backwards, and stop. Polymorphism provides you with a way to write code that doesn't depend on types. In the car example I gave, methods defined in the car class manipulate generic cars no matter what type of car they are. All of the subclasses of car can drive forward, drive backwards, and stop. Since I can trust that the methods in the superclass car will be in all of the subclasses, I can send commands to the car object and let it sort out everything on its own. The code in car is then not affected in any way when I create a new subclass. I don't need to know how the methods work, I just trust that they will. Another benefit is I won't have to change the car class code and potentially break other parts of the program. If a method in the car class doesn't work for my subclass, I override the method in my new subclass, not the code in the superclass car. Wouldn't it be great if you could create methods that were smart enough to work with whatever is sent to them? It would allow someone to send the number 4, for example, stored as a string, and the function would accept it, convert it into a number type, perform the addition, and then send it back. Well, you can with method overloading. All you do is create multiple methods with the same name, but either a different return type, different number of arguments, 
or type of arguments. You must note, however, that some languages such as JavaScript don't allow overloading because they don't assign variable types to the variables. But if you're using an object-oriented language that does assign variable types to variables, such as an integer or a double or a float, this most definitely works. Here's an example of an overloaded method. We've created two methods that both have the same name, add numbers. One returns an int or an integer. The second one returns a string. You can also see within the arguments that they accept that the first add numbers function accepts integers while the second one accepts strings. However, they would both perform in exactly the same way. You can define as many overloaded methods as you want as long as you change either the return or the arguments in the way I've described here. Above, when I created the class dodge of type car, I had to define the method named tuneup inside of the class car. I did that because you can only call an object's method if the class you're referencing has that method. But is it possible to create a superclass that has all of the methods and variables you need to take advantage of polymorphism? Yes, and it is called an interface. An interface is just a shell class that provides the names of all of the variables and methods, but no code. You describe what other classes will do with it, but don't describe exactly how. This way, you have the ability to use polymorphism without all of the problems. You can see here how I created an interface named vehicle, and then assigned to it three variables, engine, gas tank, door, and then defined six functions that all classes that are of type vehicle would have to implement, in this case, drive forward, drive backward, stop, open door, get gas, and get gas tank. And that is basically everything there is to know about object-oriented programming. I left out language-specific issues so that you weren't completely confused, but I covered the most important parts in this presentation. I plan on creating tutorials on different programming languages such as PHP, Objective-C, and maybe Java in the future if that's at all possible. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And I'm more than happy to make additions to future presentations so that you can completely understand object-oriented programming. Till next time.